Hey there guys, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be doing a Zero to Hero, of course, my entire channel basically has just been Zero to Heroes, but I think it's time to branch out into other things. And today we're, we're, well, today we're going to start a series on different kind of builds. Now this one was something I was thinking about as the new update here. Uh, Firebox has actually released videos on something, well, basically the exact same build. We both had the similar line of thinking, all based around faithfulness. This perk is actually very interesting to me, and I think it's actually pretty good, especially in solos, maybe not so much in duos and trios. Uh, maybe in duos you'd be okay with it, but in trios you'd probably want to run the more supportive kind of cleric build. And that is Faithfulness, gain 15% divine magical damage bonus. Now, this thing actually provides a decent bonus to the viability of spellcasting cleric for damage that is so holy strike is of course divine magical damage and all the skills for cleric are actually divine magical damage all the ones that actually do damage anyway so for example holy purification smite and also judgment now smite is probably well smite is going to be more damage right however People don't fight you anymore this isn't like very early on just after the game released people understand what smite does what it is, the majority of people anyway, and they just don't fight you while you have smite up. So I feel like smite nowadays is not that good, and judgment is actually coming back more into the meta. Judgment also got buffed um, a little while ago to actually be pretty good now, so we're going to be running that instead. The general idea is we're going to be buffing up pre-fight with bless and protection, and we're going to just be trying to holy strike people to death, and we have judgment if they get too close, or if we can catch them like in a certain area and sl slap them with a the judgment. And of course, we do have good melee. Uh, there was two ways I was thinking that this build could be viable. That The first one being full plate PDR, just like tank, melee stat check tank. Forcing people to come into melee with your holy strikes, otherwise you'll just kill them at ranged. Or full, full move speed cleric with like um, no plate at all, just going like chaperone and stuff. The only thing with that, it would be played more like a warlock to be honest than a cleric. However, the only issue with that is you only have four holy strikes to really kill people. The divine spells, or just damaging spells in general from Cleric, are pretty terrible. Um, Earthquake is okay, but Locust Swarm is the only other divine magical one. And it does okay damage, but it's channeled and people just walk away. If this slowed or something, perhaps, or if you could move it, this might be useful, but you can't. So Locust Swarm is basically just completely terrible. Maybe in duo, maybe you could run like Earthquake Cleric and then have another Cleric that run Locust Swarm, and that could be okay. But anyway, guys, uh, I'll do a quick overview of the gear and we'll head in game. This is mainly just... Um, stacking plus one all attributes, plus two all attributes. Of course, the classes that can utilize plus all attributes the best are going to be spellcasting classes with decent melee capabilities, such as the Cleric, such as Warlock, such as Bonk Wizard. So that's why we're just going to be trying it out with these new, well, I say new, new old stats. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in game. Okay, hey there, guys, welcome. So this is probably the most geared I've ever been in one of the videos I've done. Uh, this whole kit, I believe... Um, it's okay, I guess let's keep it for now. This entire kit, I believe, was 2,000 and something gold, so it's, you know, it's not really a budget kit, but it's not that bad. Feels weird actually having dexterity on, uh... Cleric. Usually, I'm um, having very low dexterity on Cleric. Of course, vi uh, didn't bring any lockpicks, unfortunate. Yeah, okay, magic stuff, but let's not worry about it. Now, first of all, um, matchups. What are we looking at? Pretty good, I believe, against Barbarian, Rogue, Fighter, Ranger. Warlock is probably going to be our number one bad matchup, and then probably Wizard number two. After that, I'm not exactly too sure, honestly. Um, Bard, I guess Bard would... Mm, I don't know. I think Bard would probably be fine as well. So I think we're looking at five good matchups or so. Um, the majority of them are going to be good, I believe. And then, of course, just Wizard and Warlock, as usual, are going to be pretty rough. Especially Warlock, because we have to kill Warlock without him resetting. Because if he's allowed to go and reset and heal up off of a Hydra, he's probably going to come back before we could have campfired because our um, resourcefulness is so low, it takes us so long to put it down. 
And of course, all he needs is to basically go and shut a door, and then he's able to hide your life drain back up to full. And we're probably not going to kill him unless we only used one holy strike or something. Now, our holy strikes are going to be hurting. Definitely going to be hurting. Um, I changed our cloak. I'm not sure if I show this in the thing, but we actually went for this one, which is like full damage. Uh, let's take a surgical kit just in case. And our magic bower bonus is 60% plus an additional 15% because of faithfulness. That means, you know, we're getting a 75 bonus, plus we've got a bunch of flat magical damage as well on some of our pieces. I suppose not a bunch particularly, but a decent amount. This means that our holy strikes and our judgment are going to be hurting if we can actually hit people with them, which should be, you know, generally okay. It's a pretty big AoE. It's decent range. The only thing is, is that only having four of them, you can't really afford to miss any. You know, if you're playing against a class with, like, um, low sustain, then you can probably, or, like, low sustain and decent magic resistance, you can probably afford to miss one. Um, if people are good at playing around Judgment, they can space it pretty well, and if you use it a little bit prematurely, they can just exit the range and it will cancel, cancel it, and it will go on cooldown, so that's not exactly what we're looking for. Uh, they did actually just reduce the amount of players in Goblin Caves from 7 down to 5, so it might be a bit... I mean, it definitely will be a little bit harder to actually get PvP than it was. Although it was very, very easy to get PvP, so that's probably not much of an issue. Of course, our biggest drawback is we are very slow. Very, very slow. Let's have a look. With our weapons out, we are 225. We are disgustingly slow. So basically anything can run away from us. Even the slowest like of PDR fighters is probably still faster than us. Um, now, remember, with our book out, we do only get a 10 movement suit penalty. And we do also have Bless, which gives us 5 agility. So we will go up to 260. And bear in mind, we can unequip these things to gain... I thought someone I heard someone opening a door. We can unequip these to gain more movement speed if we're chasing someone and they're just a little bit too fast, but we have the advantage. However, of course, we are going to lose quite a lot of stats from unequipping these pieces. So that's kind of we have to be very confident for that to actually work out and to be a viable strategy for us. Um some of our things do actually give us movement speed. Our boots are plus five move speed and also plate boots, so we get seven move speed from those. Let's have a look at the top helm. Oh, that's actually decent. I might keep that for another uh, cleric kit. I've got a few builds that I want to try. Now, I do think this spawn is probably going to be relatively uneventful, so I'm not sure how much PvP we'll actually get into here. Of course, for PvE, you'll be absolutely fine. The only thing you probably don't want to do is you probably don't want to boss on a build like this. As um, Sorry, the Goblin Cave solo bosses. Because you're just going to be too slow. You'll probably get caught by things, and it's just very risky. Um, I'd much prefer to have movement speed. Well, to be honest, all you need to really boss on Goblin Caves is just a good weapon. You don't even need a good weapon, you just need a decent weapon. A decent weapon and no one else trying to third-party you, and you'll be fine. Let's go in here, take a peek in here, see if we've got anyone. Uh, this is actually uncleared, which is surprising. Although, however, they would spawn on the other side if they did spawn in here. Um, still gotta see, gotta learn, like, how the new... I do actually hear someone. Up to the north. Let's go ahead and see if we can get them. Okay, I'm really surprised that he's trying to magic missile us from there. That's a sketchy decision. Uh, I assume this guy is... Yeah, this guy is pretty much base kit, which is what I was expecting, to be completely honest. Um, He doesn't really have anything of value. Maybe that will sell for a bit. I believe we've already completed the ale quest. So let's not worry about that. There were a few geared people in there. I didn't really get to scout much, though, because the lobbies fill so quickly right now. Especially only having five players. Uh, we could go down here and check if there is a Royal Coffin, but our time is a little bit low for that, as we'll have to run for the zone soon, so... That's 
a bad hit. I do hear a player outside. Didn't quite get to see what that is. It's a fighter. I was going to say he's going to go ahead and shut this door behind him. But hopefully you can see how strong this is. Like, this is a very strong uh, setup here that we're running. Uh, let's go ahead. I would like to find a safer place to campfire, but I think maybe here will be okay to just try and campfire, get some spells back. Zero Holy Strikes is, yeah, we're going to have a very rough time in any PvP that we engage in having zero Holy Strikes. Unfortunately, this um, campfire is basically objectively bad to run because it's a different kind of lighting this one's probably only worth running if you're playing for like min max on goblin cave uh, sorry ice caves just because the different kind of lighting will give you away i'm hoping we can get at least three ideally we can get four holy strikes back i think i'm probably just going to chill but yeah you can see the idea of this we use judgment as basically another free little spell which casts very quickly it actually does more damage than holy strike by the way 20 base damage on holy strike versus 25 on judgment um let's have a look if this guy had any gear that was any i think we will try and take that if we can um a lot of his pieces were pretty subpar, to be completely honest. So let's not worry about them too much. Let's go ahead and pop some meds. We did also bring way too many meds. Uh, I was doing normal games before this on quests, and you kind of just get lots of meds, because because uh, people bring them in, but they don't really use them that much. So if you're fighting people, you get a lot of their meds. So there could be a maximum of another two additional players in here. In fact, let's actually leave that open. The Goblin Mage is coming for us, but let's not worry about it too much. But, yeah, I'm not sure if you can um, tell from watching, because I feel like uh, it's harder to notice when you're watching rather than playing. But, my God, we are slow. Like, incredibly slow. But I do feel very strong. They did, of course, cap PDR at 75% um, now, so we did this build did get... I think the top end of this build got nerfed a little bit, because I do think you actually could hear that. It looks like it might just be us left in this run, so I think what we go ahead and just gonna grab this blue portal and take our way out of here. Uh, maybe we'll loot a, a few more chests, but we didn't really make much gold from this run or anything. It feels really nice having a purple weapon. It's actually decent as well, two additional weapon damage. But the number one thing is we just need to play smart. We need to not panic. The only thing that really is going to be rough are Warlocks. Wizards, honestly, they might run out of spells before they kill us, as long as we um, dodge a few and bait a few. That's actually a very nice crossbow. Um, I think I'll drop that, because it's just a bit lackluster. Let's go ahead and drop four gold as well. Grab the crossbow. And let's make our way out of here. Open up these two portals. Uh, this gives a little bit of AP, a little bit of XP. Honestly... I do want to do builds on other classes as well. It's just getting them up to level 15 to actually be able to afford the gear. I want to move away from doing quite so many zero to heroes, as that's obviously the core of what the channel's been built on, and I absolutely will continue doing them, as long as people still want to see them. It's just... There's only so many times you can do zero to heroes, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put these things on the market, see how much gold we're looking at here. Okay, hey there, guys. Welcome to the second game. Now, I'm not sure about with this build. Um... In the sense of, I thought last season, Cleric was one of the worst solo classes, um, if I'm being completely honest. I'm not sh Now I'm reassessing whether that was actually, whether I was correct on that or not, because this feels incredibly strong. But maybe this only feels strong due to the changes they made, such as having all attributes. Of course, Spellcasters are some of the hardest scaling classes with all attributes, as they can use every single... Um, stat there is like we gain benefits from literally everything i think cross tag is actually relatively meta so we'll keep that um our melee being good is nice for us really nice our bloody spell casting being as good as it is like with this high spell casting along with the magical power bonus is very very solid as well honestly 
I, I can't believe he didn't die from that. That's because mobs have, um, most mobs actually have some magic resistance. They have negative physical damage resistance in the sense that they take more damage from physical damage, but they actually do have a little bit of magic resistance in general, so... That's, if you've ever, like, used spells to kill mobs as a wizard, except from magic missiles, I mean, like, um, you know, if you've tried zapping goblins to death and stuff, yeah, that's why it takes so goddamn many zaps, just to kill, like, just an average goblin. And that's why it doesn't feel that bad when you, like, look, two-tapping two those is great. Uh, quick PDR check. Okay, we're at almost 60% with our shield out. Uh, with our shield away, we actually only have 48%. We did have 50% when I had the um, other cloak. I'm not sure if I even showed the other cloak, but we had one with an additional, uh, with 10 armor rating base plus an additional 10 armor rating. But this one, first of all, I chose this one just because of the drip, honestly. This one looks better having um, red cloak with the like black and red armor. Before this, we had a blue cloak, a, a knowledge one. Now, this room here is pretty scary, to be completely honest. And I think what we're actually going to do is just not go that way. That's... I was going to say, I hope he doesn't destroy the door. That room is, I think, one of the worst rooms you can be a cleric in. You can be kited basically forever. Um, people can outrange you. It's just a horrible idea. And this, I think, is one of the um, under-respected parts of Dark and Darker. At least in solos, is picking fights on your terms. Now, this area is still not ideal for us because people can kite us decently well here, but this is considerably better than that in uh, than in that big, massive open room where people can just run around forever, chugging potions and stuff. Um, one of the reasons why I don't think the variant um, that I was thinking of having really high move speed and just kiting around holy striking people is going to be that good is just due to running out of spells. That's kind of the core problem with, like, damage-oriented cleric. You only really have four damage spells. Because the other options are just very poor. Judgment, the range is just too high of it. It's more of like a... I, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's... You can't use that when people are... When you're chasing people, basically, because they would just outrun it. I would really like to loot this. I'm honestly considering just tanking a few hits if I have to, to kill this guy quicker, because he's not going to do almost any damage to us. We have the um, half duration of negative ailments on us, the um, protection from evil. We also have a decent amount of will, which again reduces them, I believe. We also take three less damage from all sources flat due to perseverance. This guy does almost zero damage with his poison. We can just pop one potion. I think I prefer to just kill it quicker. Especially when we have this many meds. Right, uh, one health potion will overheal us, in fact, so let's not worry about that. Right, pendant, three physical damage. Okay, sure. Damn, we got both resourcefulness pieces. That's quite unfortunate. After we've looted this, we'll probably go looking for a bit of PvP. We did get a few good treasures here. Um, I guess we'll take that, but it's not particularly that useful. That's an okay crystal ball. And by okay, I mean, actually, it's pretty terrible, so I'm not sure why I said that. I guess it's just the fact that it's blue is okay. Honestly, this ring's probably not even worth taking out. But anyway, let's actually go the other way. So this way, we're inside the zone like pretty much immediately, and we can actually get a bit more looting done. And then we can probably get into the PvP. Uh, those are decent plate pants for this build, but I just don't think you can really afford to lose plus all attributes. Honestly, the flange mace when you're not like running base kit cleric feels pretty good. I did think about using a morning star instead because I. I always disliked the attack pattern of the Morning Star. However, <laughs> basically, it, it breaks barrels in one hit. Oh, sorry, not barrels, boxes in one hit, which feels like really good. The only problem with the maces is it's really easy to hit with not the sweet spot, which of course means you're doing like quite a bit less damage. And um, that's something to be quite cautious of when you're actually engaging in like really close melee is you're probably not going to be hitting them with the full maximum damage from your weapon so you are taking like a pretty big damage loss in that sense well a lot of weapons don't really have that issue 
Uh, it's kind of just a thing that happens with cleric, cleric weapons where they are just quite vulnerable to that. The only real exception, I believe... Well, actually, I believe it's just the Flange Mason Morningstar that had that issue. The Club and the Warhammer, I actually don't think do have that issue at all. Really. By the way, guys, I just want to say... Um, if you've been enjoying the video and you want to see some more different things, I'd appreciate likes on the video. I'd also appreciate subscriptions if you'd like to see more like this, more from me. Like I say, I'm going to be expanding out into more kind of different builds rather than probably doing as many Zero to Heroes. Because just doing Zero to Heroes, you don't really get to experience um, as much as the game as I'd probably like to. I will probably also eventually expand out into doing some Duos and Trios content. However, I'm just not too sure how I'm going to work about that yet. Um, I've also got a few questions for you guys. Uh, first of all, if you have any interesting build ideas that you'd like to see fleshed out that, or tried out that at least have like a a bit of a theme, I'd be happy to try and um, try and uh, test out some of these suggestions in the comments if they're seeming like interesting or anything. And also, I'm thinking about making a Discord for a community um, where you know you can meet up with people who. Also watch me, I suppose, and hopefully play together, get some duos, some trios in. Um, maybe eventually, maybe that's how I'll handle the duos and trios content. Like I said, I'm not too sure. There's a lot of things to figure out. Anyway, but if you'd like to join what, let me know in the comments below. And if I get enough people saying that they would like to join, I probably will make a Discord. Uh, I just don't want to make one if there's only going to be, you know, a few people joining. I understand I don't have the biggest community. There's actually a dead goblin there, so, and that door's open, so there's likely someone to be there. This area is actually surprisingly not the worst, because there's quite a lot of line of sight blocking things, such as these pillars and things, which you can use to your advantage as a cleric, to get that downtime to med up. Or oh, sorry, to heal up. Let's quickly just buff up. I think... I doubt we're alone. But I haven't heard anything for a while, so I'm not exactly sure where the other players could be. There's a dead player here. Some pretty low tier gear. Yeah. Uh, let's actually upgrade our campfire, I guess. Oh, another campfire is actually nice. I would kind of like to take another campfire. Maybe let's do that. Let's quickly check out these dark leather leggings. Ah, pretty terrible. All right, let's not worry about them. I think we basically got to the fight so late. This is. Possibly no one left, but either way, I'll probably leave this one in just because... I've asked those few questions and I've yapped a fair bit about the viability of things and stuff, so I think it hopefully it still poses an interesting thing. Um, There's still one well, of my first few games with the reduced player count of Goblin Caves. I'm So far, I'm surprised by how it's feeling. This feels perhaps more like the devs intended to have, where it's not just... No, there is someone. Where, though? There. Okay. Let's open this. Let's tr quickly kill some mobs that are on us. And then try and loot him, see if he's got anything of any value. Uh, he looked kind of naked, so very possible that he has basically nothing. Let's... First of all, take a look, though. Um, okay, he has a lot of treasures. Okay. Wow, he has a lot of high tier treasures as well. Okay. I wonder what this guy was up to. Alright, honestly, let's just drop all of these. We'll be able to take high tier treasures out. Um, is that all we want? Uh... Oh my god, okay. Um, drop that. Uh, that'll do us, I guess. Unfortunately, like I had some really high tier treasures, but our is basically full of treasures anyway, so... Well, I, I'm glad we found that guy. That's going to be a bunch more money for us anyway. 1,116 AP. The AP also... So now, notice you get 90... Well, we got 99 for this player. Um, I think this depends based on, like, rank and stuff, so I'm not 100% sure how that works yet. First thing to note, they actually misspelled early. I swear this used to be correct. Oh, no, they, it was pre-season, wasn't it? And now it's called early access season. But just something to note. Hopefully they can fix that. Not that it really matters. And one thing to note is the 
um, AP costs to actually enter the dungeon are significantly higher than they were before. To enter Goblin Caves, Exemplar 1, so if you're on the Demigod grind, it costs 1,200 to enter the dungeon now, which is insane. I, I think it was about like 600 before or something like that. So maybe 500. Anyway, it is significantly higher. I know you get more from killing players now, but I don't believe you get anything more from loot and stuff. And loot also, to me, does feel a bit nerfed. So I don't know if this is even possible. Like, eh, very possible that it is. I'm not sure. Obviously, there are a few... De uh, uh, what, what are they called? Exemplars already. There's no demigods yet, but that will probably change soon enough. Okay, welcome, guys, to the third match. I wish I could do um, different map content as well, like, just as a solo, but unfortunately... For now, at least, until they decide to add uh, other map options for solos, this is unfortunately, it's just going to be Goblin Caves, I guess. Uh, took a bit of unnecessary damage there, but let's not worry about it too much. But let's. I'm hoping we can maybe look for a little bit more PvP this run. Uh, I should have dropped off one of these campfires. Three is probably a bit much, but... Actually, let's just... We have the inventory space now. Let's go ahead and save that. I also didn't even... Oh, no, we actually found that... Wow. Uh, d okay. Now, we are doing pretty good damage, to be honest. Um, we are a bit low on meds, so maybe I should have brought in a few more than this. We kind of went from one extreme to the other. I was checking to see if there was going to be the health shrine in here. Oh, uh, one thing which I wanted to comment on as well is, um, specifically for Cleric... Well, actually, not specifically for Cleric, but it happens with, like, Warlock and Wizard as two. But one thing to note is we actually got Magical Power on this, and while that doesn't help us out too much, it does help us out because we're most likely going to be judgmenting with our melee weapon out if we are actually in any kind of dangerous situation. So that is just, like, another little um, bonus thought to think about. There's someone there. I'm not exactly sure what that is. It looks like some kind of fighter or something. There was a Slayer fighter in this game with... Yeah, that's definitely a fighter. Um, there was a Slayer fighter in this one with a Crystal Ball, which makes me think he could possibly be relatively geared. The only thing is, if this guy doesn't want to fight... He can just, like, tell us he doesn't want to fight. And there's not really anything we can do to actually force a fight. Because he will just outrun us so far. That's why I think Cleric is, um... Cleric and PDR Fighter are not the best for solos. Because people only fight, really, on bad terms. Oh, sorry. on Yeah, well, on bad terms. On bad terms for you, specifically. If you have an advantage and they're faster than you, why would they ever fight? They're just going to run away. Now, of course, there are certain situations where you can fortify, uh, force a fight, like we did with that ranger in the previous game. Um, mainly, you know, towards extractions and things, and perhaps if they've got mobs on them, you can, and if they need to go through a certain door because of the zone or something like along those lines. But those situations, all I'm saying is, are just not particularly common. I'm looking for ideally green treasures or better here. Uh, gems, I guess, are fine white, but... Occultus robe. It's actually a decent occultus robe for green, but... I think we can do better without inventory space than a green occultus robe that won't really sell for anything on the market. Lots of things are not really selling for... Uh, lots of chests and legs right now aren't really selling for too much, just because if you don't have all attributes, it feels very bad to be spending too much money on something that doesn't even have all attributes. Um, I think after this, let's go and look for a little bit of PvP. The only thing is, of course, we don't want to be third party, but that's probably much less of a, an issue now that there's only five people in total in the lobby. Obviously, four excluding us. Does that mean going into the middle of the map immediately at the start as a plate, as a slow plate wearing character? Yeah, probably still not, but let's go ahead and stick to the sides for now. We'll probably be pushed towards the middle anyway. It appears for now, at least, we're all kind of on the correct side of the zone. There is still this guy that I would like to try and fight, but almost certainly will not let us fight. 
What we can do is try and cut him off through these boards. He's not actually going to fight, I'm aware. He, um, we we probably outgear this guy massively. Yeah, he's never going to fight us, so let's just not bother. Um, let's just pretend that we're going to continue fighting at him and just open this door and do whatever we're going to do in here. We need to cut, um, well, doors, fight around doors is pretty bad for us in general. I guess ideally we'd like to start buffed up, so we would, from that point of view, like to start near a door so we can, like, guarantee the buff up. It's a shame I forgot to bring the bloody coin purse list, but, uh, ran by the look of it. Would have had a lot of gold already, but anyway, let's not worry about that. But then, of course, after that, Holy Strike takes quite a while to cast, and people can. It generally takes longer to cast than it takes people to shut doors. So you're just going to get the door shut in your face every single time. Judgment, however, is a pretty decent one because you, even if you lose line of sight, if they stay within range, it will actually continue to um, do the damage anyway. So Judgment's pretty good at, at, at doors. Just not so much Holy Strike, and Holy Strike, of course, is kind of your main thing. Um, down here there is actually pretty good loot. There is a health shrine as well, so we could have saved on a few meds. But I don't think we need to worry about it too much. It's just now, maybe let's try um... I mean, this guy's never going to want to fight. I did hear something else to the south, though. Someone else. That guy is going to just be annoying the entire game. He's He basically has zero chance of killing us, which he's aware, which is why he's just running. It's just um, he's going to be a nuisance and try and third party us when we actually do ever get into another fight. So I guess for now, let's just continue down where we were going to go. Um, I was going to take out the centipede. Oh, there. What's that? I think that's the um, Slayer Fighter that we saw with the crystal ball. Now, whilst we do have pretty good PDR, if that guy has armor penetration, the amount of damage he's going to be outputting is going to be quite scary. So we don't really want to be... Um... Basically, we, don't, we need to make sure we don't disrespect him. Because if he has built correctly to deal with PDR, which right now there's a fair few people running PDR, it's probably one of the most popular it's been. Basically, just because... Okay, well, this guy did kind of want to try and catch us off guard there, but that's not going to work. Um, he can just run through the doors forever. Let's just continue pushing him, I guess, for now. What we can do is we can just get him to stay out in the zone. And while, of course, he can heal out inside of the zone... Um... He will at least be running out of meds, and he will have to eventually push into us a bit further. I think even, perhaps. Maybe let's try this. <laughs> okay. I don't really want to waste another Holy Strike on this guy when we've got people that could actually be genuine threats. So all we're going to do is just be annoying to this guy and just try and keep him outside the zone. I don't, like I say, he could third party us. He's going to do a very little amount of damage to us. It's unfortunate that this guy's kind of spent our entire game just fighting against this guy. I probably shouldn't have opened that because now this gives him an out. Hello. Okay, 
Okay, well, we did kill him with that. His gear is going to be... I imagine he's not going to have, like, anything of value. Uh, okay, let's not even read that. Let's, let's just grab a few of these pieces that might be decent. Some of the higher tier things. Another campfire is okay. All right. Unfortunately, we did spend so much time against that guy. It's weird, because whenever... It feels like whenever I come in with gear, people don't come in with gear. And whenever I don't come in with gear, people do come in with gear. It feels like it's never really a fair fight one way or another. Well, let's go and see if we can quickly find that warlock. However, I imagine he's already left or he's about to leave. Yep. I'd imagine he's already left at this point, then. It would be really nice if Goblin Caves had a second layer, so then you could actually go to, like, a higher risk, higher reward area. Then possibly people would actually be more convinced to stay in um, actual Goblin Caves. Like, look at... We got such little AP for this run, because we just didn't really do anything, because that guy was just being a pest to us the entire time. Of course, eventually we did kill him. We have finally hit level 20, not that that really changes anything, but... Let's see how much money we earn. Hey, hey there, guys. Welcome back. Um, I'm not sure how long we want this video to be, so we might only do a few more runs. I suppose maybe with these um, actual kind of build videos. Perhaps maybe I should edit these down a lot more, and maybe they should be um, not as long as the general Zero to Heroes I do. I understand that a lot of people enjoy how long my videos are, which is kind of why I made them so long. Um, it wasn't the original intention, but... I'm not sure. We're just trying out new formats and stuff, testing stuff out. See what you guys think, see how the feedback's like. See how the analytics are. Um, as I say, we don't want to be in this run particularly. Uh, sorry, this room. I assume that another player... Oh, I didn't realise there was a guy this close. I don't know where the closest spawn will be now. Uh, obviously, previously there was someone who would spawn either here or possibly over in that room. Um, but due to the reduced players, it's probably changed the spawn hmm, dynamics, I suppose. Um, let's get potion ticking. We're okay, we don't need to use our heals. Even though you do get heals back quite quickly. Uh, light he uh, sorry, lesser heals that are. That is, you get them back pretty damn quickly just from resting. Anyway, let's try and do a bit more looting. Um, I'm not really doing too much looting, so I'm primarily looking for some PvP to try and show off the build a bit more. I suppose a uh, PvP montage would probably be a bit better for that, but... Um, I know a lot of people appreciate seeing, like, how to... Um, just move around the map properly and things. Uh, not to say I'm the best at that or anything, but... For the newer players, there is thought process that goes into things um, that you might not expect with just picking your rooms, like I'm saying. If you're, you know, a long... something that excels at long range, for example, like a wizard or a... a ranger, of course you want to try and stick to the more open areas where you have room to kite, you have space to actually get some shots off. Meanwhile, if you're a relatively low-ranged um, class, such as Barbarian or Cleric or... Mm, I hesitate to say Fighter because, you know, with a crossbow you can absolutely get quite a few kills from range. However, it's kind of rare as a fighter you're getting kills solely from your ranged weapons, unless you're running the um, Weapon Mastery build with like a Windless Crossbow and you know, a Rico bow or another crossbow or something along those lines. That one's a lot more deadly at range, just because the windlass does such insane damage. Especially if you have quite a bit of physical power stacked up. Mm, I don't... Oh no, there are signs of... There has been a player here. But are they still here? Yes, they are. It's a wizard. That's not good. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Wizard's not as bad as Warlock, uh, especially if they don't exactly know what your class does. Um, he probably wasn't expecting the just high amounts of damage that we do with our spells from a distance. Which is honestly an easy mistake to make. Uh, it's never really felt... Oh, those are actually pretty decent. It's never felt like Warlock is... Sorry. 
Cleric has had such crazy good ranged uh, examples. I guess it's just because you don't normally run this much magic damage on a um, Cleric, especially with the boost to Faithfulness. Or sorry, the Faithfulness boost to your uh, Divine Magic spells. But yeah, as soon as he um, missed that first fireball, I was feeling relatively good. One thing to note is protection only blocks physical damage. It's just like a, a blue pot. And I do believe it actually does stack with blue pot. And you can, of course, use the anti-magic potions. It's just, you know, quite often you're not going to be running those. People don't really tend to bring those that much. People have done a bit more recently because people are actually running a lot more magic damage classes in solos. There's a lot more cleric. Wizard's a lot better than it historically has been in solos. Warlock is a lot better. Uh, well, I'm not sure about Warlock, actually. Maybe Warlock's, like, best moment was when Torture Mastery first released, and it was really good with just even, like, plus three magical healing, and you could feel, like, a crazy good amount of healing from your dots. Did hear a portal open up very close. Normally, I'd have the resting, but because I'm yapping, I think we'll just continue for now. Um, I don't really want to take an early extract. I would like to try and get a bit more PvP in. I ideally, against people a bit more geared... I thought that guy's gear wasn't at, as low as it actually was, because cause, um, he has a chest. I don't know. It feels like in this patch, it's difficult to find chests, and I'm finding much more other pieces. Specifically gloves and... Um, gloves, boots, and helmets, especially. I feel like I find a ridiculous amount of those compared to chests. But, of course, <laughs> not always the case. I, I'm honestly curious if we should try and boss. I have killed the boss solo base kit as rogue, but that's a very different beast to doing it as cleric. Now, of course you'll have much more health and PDR and stuff as cleric, and we have much higher damage output. However, I believe the cave troll does still one-shot you with certain attacks. Okay, that's opened up, so someone has been here. Let's just have a little bit of a listen, see if we can... It's a mob. Well, there's a rogue there. He's dead. I guess he died to a mob or a trap. Maybe this trap. Let's have a quick look. Um, he's been looted, actually. So, no, he died to a player. A lot of these pieces aren't very good. So, someone's going around killing people. Or at least one other player, anyway. Let's see if we can do a little bit of hunting. See if we can come across him. This room, again, is not good for us. There, you see that? Oh, no, it's Goblin, never mind. I thought that was a player. Hmm. Right, well, let's not go this way anyway. There's no point of unnecessarily risking stuff. Let's just go ahead and head this way. Okay, there's actually another portal in there, so someone could go and take that out easily. So there's a maximum of two other players right now. Of course, five... Hmm, interesting. The fact that those goblins were there, perhaps someone went down to the south? Hmm, I'm not really too sure. How did that hit us? Very little damage incoming onto us, though, especially from mobs, like... Oh, there is a player. Looks like a relatively low-geared player. Nice dodge there, actually. Okay, no, he was pretty low anyway. Not sure what we hit this guy with. Let's just do a quick damage check. Oh, sorry, not damage check. Gear check. Those are okay. Those will probably sell for a bit. Bunch of treasures for us. Ooh, those aren't that bad either. That's not very good. That's... I'm not sure about the fine chorus. Last patch, the... Dark plate armor was selling for a lot, no matter how good or bad it was. That's okay as well, that might sell. Now, we are completely out of poly strikes again, so we probably will want a campfire. Or perhaps just take an extract. 
There could be, what, one other player in here maximum now? And if we come into them now when we don't have any Holy Strikes, we could very possibly be in for a bad time. Um, oh, the last guy was actually a Barbarian that I saw. I remember seeing him. He had like a... He had a bit of gear. He wasn't base kit. He wasn't particularly geared, but he had some. I think let's just go ahead and look for a portal. The fact that the mobs are still alive in here makes me feel like he's probably not in here. Um, there is, of course, a portal over there. I think I might still need a goblin mage for my quest, so let's actually just go ahead and kill this guy as well. Go ahead, grab this health shrine. Of course, we grab these things very quickly due to um, it being based... In magical interaction speed is based on your will. We do actually have higher knowledge than Will at the moment, which is a bit unusual for a cleric, but... Uh, it's because of these pieces, actually. These things, these two pieces give eight knowledge combined. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and take that. And let's grab that. And then this looks like a pretty good loadout for us. Pretty good amount of loot. Well, I don't know. I suppose nothing can go wrong with just checking a few more of these chests. We've got another extra portal here. Even if someone comes and uses this portal, we'll be fine. I would like to fight someone a bit similar in gear to us. Like, our gear isn't crazy good, but it is pretty solid. Like, you know, a two to 3,000 gold kit is hardly bis at all. In fact, two to 3,000 gold might not be enough for a single bis item, but it is still a pretty solid kit. I will absolutely admit that. I do see a lot of people recently complaining about the um, Holy Strike. It does have pretty good AoE, it does do pretty solid damage, it does take quite a while to cast though, and I feel like half the reason it's so powerful is just due to how little actual other useful damage spells Cleric has. I would absolutely be fine if they nerfed Holy Strike, if they just gave Cleric another spell which was actually usable in combat to actually deal damage, like Earthquake, this is only really useful if someone, if there's like another threat, so if you could use like an explosive bottle and then somehow earthquake them inside of there, but that's not very realistic. If they have a mob on them, that could happen, but even then that's still quite specific as well, so it's not very useful. And Locust Swarm just sucks, straight up. The fact that you have to channel it is just awful. If you could move it, like I say, then it might be okay, but you can't. Okay, welcome back guys. I would like to... There is a pretty geared uh, fighter in this run, which I just um, scouted, which I would like to try and fight. Uh, this one will probably just be talking about my thoughts really on Cleric. Um, first of all, I don't really think Cleric is that oppressive as a class, because in general it has that glaring um, drawback of just being disgustingly slow. Like, even, you know, Fighter has Sprint to try and carry it when it's wearing plate and stuff, but Cleric doesn't have a crossbow, doesn't have Franciscas, doesn't have throwing knives, and has no way to boost its own movement speed except from Bless, which is five movement speeds, so, you know, not going to be the most impactful. But, yeah, those are my thoughts. So Holy Strike, I could understand if they nerfed it a bit. Um... Perhaps it could get the Lightning Strike treatment. However, I feel like Lightning Strike honestly may have been a little bit over-nerfed with the AoE reduction. Because it feels... Oh, I actually need the Giant Spiders for a quest. I actually haven't really used it much. But I know at uh, one time it was decently meta. And I was actually running it instead of Fireball. Although that, to be honest, I was just kind of feeling Lightning a bit more than Fire at the time. So, There's someone here. Let's buff up just in case they get the jump on us. Down below. I can't tell what class that is. Let's kill this giant spider because I want my quest first of all. Please don't... Oh my god. Okay, right. It lasts half as long because we're a cleric. That's a nice little bonus about cleric, I guess. Okay, we did kill it very quickly. But I can't see anything in these dark bits. I'm assuming just questing. Can you give me, please? I'm just chilling, dude. Mm. Okay, you're all good. What quest you up? 
What's that? What quests do you at? You still at the starting ones, or...? The one where you have to go to the Goblin Prison A, but I can't find oh, it right. those maps are online. Yeah. It's, if it's on this map. I have no idea, honestly. I know what it looks like, I just don't know where it is. Which one does it look like? Out of curiosity. That has, like, the static blue portal in the middle of it. But I don't know if it's on this map or not. Right, okay. I don't think it is. I think this is the map that doesn't have it. Okay. Alright, well, I'm gonna go this way, so good luck. What a nice guy. <laughs> I know some people always want blood when, uh, whenever I see someone who begs for their life, but I can't, you know? I felt too bad. He said he's just a... I don't know, he looked, to be honest, he didn't really look like that much of a noob, but it's fine. Maybe I should disable Void. I'd have more kills if I just disabled Void, but hey. Anyway, um... I reckon I respect someone just wanted to quest. That's fine. Lantern... No, not really. Oh, look. There's a player. What's that? Looks like a warlock? No, it's a cleric. Ah, that guy was like an early base cat, I guess, by the look of it. Yeah. Unfortunately for this guy, um, gear gap is just too crazy there. Yeah, this guy was basically base kit. Although, honestly, let's take a few of his meds. I think his gold coin purse as well. I think his lunch money. Blue pots. Can never go wrong with more blue pots. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think we'll probably do a bit of resting to get some buffs back and stuff here. Might as well you pop another heal. Make sure we're at four holy strikes. So, yeah. Um, I'm not a cleric main or anything, but my opinion on cleric right now is it's pretty damn good in solos. It's very enjoyable to play. I personally always, for some reason, enjoyed the, like... Well, I thought I heard someone there for a second. The spellcasting plate, um, kind of fantasy, which wasn't really so much in Dark and Darker, you know, it was just as a support healer, as a cleric. This feels much more like a paladin kind of thing, which is very awesome. I really enjoy it. Is it problematic? Mm, I'd say no. Just because it's not so fast that it's, like, impossible to deal with. Like, um, a barbarian won't just chase you to the edge of the earth. Of course, maybe they don't so much anymore after they got nerfed, but... It was an option, right? And I feel like Rogue as well. If Rogue is a class that's ever strong, Rogue feels very oppressive to deal with, so... I think it makes sense on why the general community... Uh, or why it's kept in a state where most of the community thinks Rogue is a bit underpowered, underwhelming. Um, especially due to how Landmine works. Of course, Landmine did receive that little rework and Rogue got a few buffs here and there on this patch. Um, no idea how much this has shifted the community's perception of Rogue. I don't think Rogue is as bad as people were saying it was, particularly. Um, Rogue has always been a class that scales very well with gear, but at, like, low gear levels is very underwhelming. And I think that's fine to have classes like that, you know? Like, um... If you get, like, a... The thing is... Alright, so... Oh, uh, uh, pretty on black cluster pieces, honestly. Again, let's take another campfire. If something attacks faster, it's going to scale harder with weapon damage, true physical damage, additional physical damage, that kind of stuff, right? And Rogue, I believe, is the fastest hitting base kit in the game. However, it could possibly be Ranger with their short sword or perhaps Bard as well. I think it's either Rogue or Bard. I don't think it's actually Ranger, but I'm not too sure. Uh, especially when it has the ranged option of the hand crossbow. Not that the hand crossbow is that insane or anything. Uh, I want to see a lot of mid-tier loot. But I'm really surprised by how quiet this map is. Now, I don't want to open this, because um, we open it quite quickly as a cleric. It's, of course, based on your magical interaction speed, which is currently based on your will. It used to be based on your knowledge. So let's leave that open, or not open, I guess, closed. Um, perhaps we can bait some class with like a low will into actually trying to open that and kill them whilst they go for it. Ideally, we're looking for a proper fight. I wanted to try and find that final fighter that has like a good-ish loadout. He looked like he was in almost full blues, so it would be a pretty decent fight. I think we're definitely favoured. I think Cleric just um, is kind of designed to beat fighter 
Although it feels like there's kind of a few classes that are built to beat Fighter. Cleric's one of them. Um, Warlock as well is pretty damn solid against it. Uh, talking about PDR Fighter here. And Wizard as well. Shame we haven't really found any nice loot from any of these runs, and I'm surprised that even running through the middle of the map here, we're not really going to find anyone. Well, okay, that's an okay hand skull. I guess we'll see how much it's worth. Perhaps let's drop down here and kill the um, centipedes. Hopefully they'll drop us some loot. <sighs> I'm really tempted to, like... Whenever I have a good kit now, after learning the um, bites, I'm really tempted to go down and try and kill the bosses, but I didn't actually learn uh, Cyclops yet. I only learned Troll. Troll seems relatively easy. It does take quite a while, though. You do have to be patient. That's honestly my number one tip if you haven't actually bossed before. Just be very patient. It takes a while. Um, the only thing to note is, as well, is the um, Troll does actually have regen, apparently, according to the wiki. So, like, the longer you do take to kill it, the longer it is going to take, like, even more so. Hopefully this guy's got some good jewelry for us. It seems like they always do the second dash away when they're pretty low on health. Well, not really what I was looking for, but not too bad. Let's pop a heal. Go back up. There is another one, but let's not worry about that. We kind of need to go for the zone. That's not our gas cloud. I hear, yeah, a goblin just attacked to the southeast. Um, oh, look. Okay, this looked like, the looked like a pretty low gear um, rogue, yeah. Rogue just also, I believe, has a pretty bad matchup against us, so yeah, that's a bit unlucky for him. His best option was, um, honestly, just to try and run. Don't think he really could have done much to us. Um, again, I'll say this tip again, because the, on the minimap in the bottom right corner, where the final white circle is, is like, you know, around here, that means the final portal is going to spawn there. It doesn't, however, give you an indication of, um, what verticality it's on, so it could be, if this is like a multi-floor room, it could be up here, it could be down below. However, if it looks like it's kind of in the wall, it's most likely just on a different, um, floor. Uh, you know what, let's drop these Franciscas, let's try and take, can we somehow shift our inventory around four slots? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab one of these blues and then make our way out of here. That was the final game of this video, guys. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to fight against that longsword, the guy who was pretty geared. I don't know, I went to the middle of the map, he wasn't there. I imagine he probably just didn't want the fight, honestly, because it's just a bit of a counter matchup. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'd appreciate uh, any likes on this video. Let me know if you've got any ideas for the comments below and any builds you'd like to try and see. I don't have all classes at level 15 yet. Um, I'm not sure if I am going to get all classes at level 15 yet, but we'll see. I'll try and do some builds. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.